Dr. Larry Crabb is our guest, has been the last few days and will continue to be, God willing, over the next several days. He is uh, a renowned psychologist and author. He has written a new book called 66 Love Letters from God to You, a conversation with God that invites you into his story. And we're having a terrific conversation. I know you've been enjoying it. If you're watching for the first time, welcome. You're going to want to go back on the website and catch the other interviews because this is good stuff. We're talking now, as you've divided the Bible into seven segments, and then you're dealing with every book of the Bible, which was, mm -hmm. was a gargantuan task, by the way. If I knew what it was going to be like when I began, I probably wouldn't have done yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, it took it you four years. It was a lot of work. A lot of work. I a lot read of commentaries in each book of the Bible. I read the scholars. I, I really worked this thing. Well, it, it, it shows. I mean, because because it's 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 not a superficial book by any stretch. But you you entitled this segment "Living in Mystery." with wisdom and hope. And these five letters, Job through the Song of Songs, uh, are known as wisdom literature. W what do the scholars mean when they say wisdom literature? What does that mean? Uh, I've often heard it defined as skillful living, and I've never liked that phrase. Yeah. I know some wonderful scholars call, that, call it that, so I don't want to get too negative on it because right. I'm sure they're right and I'm wrong. But I don't see the Christianity, the, the Christian life or following the following God life as a set of skills. I, I see it as kind of responding to a story, joining a story, participating in a narrative. I see it as using um, your, your own mind to think things through in light of who God is, in light of what you want to move through life. It isn't a matter of skill. It's, it's really a matter of wisdom. I differentiate the two. Oh, that's good. Now, let's start with Job. Job's one of my favorite characters. In fact, in, in, in my latest book, in the introduction, I say, I've always admired the biblical Job and I've always wanted to be like him. Not meaning I want to go through what he went through, exactly. but I, I loved the guy's attitude. I loved his spirit. I loved his uh, his uh, intellectual engagement yeah. with God, yeah, as yeah. well as his heart engagement with God. He the was guy was he was a full meal deal. He 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 was he was something. But <laughs> you have God saying something here. By the way, did you ever feel a little presumptuous putting quotes around your thoughts on what God would, might say? Uh, tell me what you're going to read there. Let's just kind of <laughs> skip that thought. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> just a little bit actually. I, I, and I do, I do make a caveat on the opening by saying, <laughs> I make it really clear that if I you want know. to hear the Word of God, you read the Bible. No, of course. Yeah, yeah you, you don't want somebody one day, you know, th th 300 years from now, quoting Dr. Larry Crabb, <laughs> chapter and verse. That would be a big... <laughs> anyway, you have God saying, I punish people who reject me by letting them have their way. Hell is the enjoyment of their own way forever. This really tickled me. Mm -hmm. I thought of C.S. Lewis's great divorce. Mm -hmm. you know, if you don't like your neighbors in hell, That's right. you just, it's by an act of the will, you, so, so you just move away from your neighbors. So he says hell is always expanding. Yeah, right. <laughs> but Into more and more isolation. More and more isolation, you're right. But, but it tickled me, but it's a profound point. I punish people who reject me by letting them have their way. Expand on that. Well. Uh, it was also Lewis who said that uh, one of two things will happen. Either we'll say to God, thy will be done, or he'll say to us, thy will be done. Mm. And so what is my will? And my will is I know what life is. Life is getting acceptance. Life is being popular. Life is being, you know, whatever. I know what death is. It's not looking like a fool. And, and if I'm totally consumed with my own way, and then God says, if that's really what you want, I mean, Romans 1, he gave them over to their own way. Yeah. Three times is what we're told that he gave them over to themselves. And I believe that, um, that if my commitment is to make my life work on my terms, that God will honor my dignity by allowing that to happen. But the end result is isolation, no community. And that's my understanding of hell. There was Dostoevsky in Brothers Karamazov, mm -hmm. the greatest novel ever written in my judgment, mm -hmm. and many others feel the same way. He has the, the major character, Father Zosima, uh, ask the question, well, what is hell? And Zosima's response was, hell is the suffering of being unable to love. Mm. And I think there's some profound truth in that. Mm. And actually, when I talk about hell is the enjoyment of your own way forever, I'm quoting Dorothy Sayers there, a Lewis contemporary, who said exactly that, that hell is the enjoyment of your own way forever. Mm. Was well, Sosama the fat old priest who was dying and kind of holding court and they were gathering around and talking to him about stuff? Is that, is that who that was? I think that was close to it, yeah. Father Sosama, sure. Well then, I, you know, I, I read it years ago. I, yeah. I, I, he said something that I just, I just loved. He was talking about ministry. The masses I love, he says, the masses I love. It's the individual I can't stand. Yeah. <laughs> 
That was actually a woman named Madame Holikoff who was talking to Zosima. Oh, that's what it was. Okay. So. And I read it once about 15, so. Yeah, I read it just recently again because it's such a great book. And, and, and she was saying, I just love yeah. people. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as a, as a pastor, I, 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 I can understand. I love that. people in general, not in particular. That's right. You say, uh, in fact, you refer to, and I love this, you, you have God referring to his Jewish servant, mm. uh, Abraham Heschel. Mm. Quote from Heschel God is not nice, God is not an uncle, God is an earthquake. An earthquake. In light of what's just happened in Haiti mm. a, a few months ago. Mm. Uh, that really s jumped out at me. Yes. Um, and people reading that might say, well, then if that's the case, as Lewis put it with Aslan, mm. he's not a tame he's lion, not, yeah. he's dangerous. Yeah. Maybe I don't want this God. Maybe I don't want to mess with him. Maybe it's better I should just live on my own. I think a fair number believe that and operate that way. And a fair number of Christians, I think, have that same attitude. Yeah because God is a little risky to be with. Uh, another Lewis quote he's referring to, um, he's, he's not safe, but he's good. Yeah. And I think that that's, uh, to me, is the lesson of Job. He's not safe, but he's good. Let's move on to the Psalms. Um, countless millions of believers over the centuries have found great solace in the Psalms. Yeah. That's well uh, for many centuries of church history, the Psalms were all that was read, uh, sung Mm -hmm. uh, or chanted in, 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 in public worship services. I remember Billy Graham one time saying uh, his morning quiet time always includes a psalm mm, or two. Yeah. Uh, nothing uh, has been said about the psalms that uh, couldn't be said time and time again. Um, the, the, it wasn't just David who wrote in the mm -hmm. Psalms. Mm -hmm. You've got Psalms by Asaph, you've mm -hmm. got Psalms by Moses, you've got Psalms by so many different uh, mm -hmm. writers. Mm -hmm. You've got what are known as imprecatory Psalms. Mm -hmm. Dear God, I want you to nail my enemy. Yeah. I, I want you to go in and just make him suffer. Dash their heads against a rock until they bleed to death. That's right. What do you do with that? This is a, this is a love letter and you've got these, these imprecatory Psalms, these, yeah. these I just want to nail that sucker kind of psalm. What do you, how do you deal with that? Let me back up a little bit on that question. Mm -hmm. I, I want to respond yeah. to it. Um, I, I take Job as um, instructing me, as my lover talking to me, saying there will be seasons when you'll have no explanation for what's going on. You won't understand why this happens, why that happens, because Job wasn't privy to the counsels that were going on between God and Satan. He didn't know about that. All he knew was his, uh, his wealth disappeared, his kids were dead, and he lost his health. That's all he knew. What's going on? He had no idea. And I believe that, um, I, I really do believe that God was surfacing something in Job that needed repentance. Because Job was, um, it's all through the, it's all through the, the, the scriptures, all through the, the, the 42 chapters, where Job is basically saying, I really have a case to present. I wish I had a chance to talk to God to present my case. And then when he had that opportunity in, in Job 38, um, God basically said, if you want to be a lawyer in my courtroom, you've got to pass a bar exam first. And Job failed the entire bar exam. He had no right to question God. Um, yeah, you know, where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Yeah, you know, oh, I guess I wasn't there maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't consult with me on that Ex one. Exactly. Sure. And so I think that he's talking about unexplained suffering will come into our lives and we're not going to know what to do with it. And so I think Psalms follows by saying, that I want you to be real with me, God speaking. I want you to be real. I want you to come out of hiding in a community and in your community of, of God's people, I want you to sing songs like this. Some are wonderful songs of praise. Some are other songs of imprecatory uh, difficulties of saying, I just wish this would be different. Yeah. And I think it's time in church that we got honest about where we are. Yeah. And there's times I'd like to see some people that have been mean to me, I'd like to see them have their ministry fail. Yeah. Now, is that good on my part? No, that's no. not good on my part. That's, not, that's no. not right. But should I pretend it's not happening in me? Yeah. Or should I maybe be with people where I can be alive where I am and then maybe experience the wonder of grace, yeah. the wonder that God is still for me, knowing that I'm a mess. Yeah. And he still says, but you know what I'm going to do with you? I want to shape you up into something beautiful. Yeah. Join me. We're going somewhere. That's what the Psalms are all about to me. Come out of hiding. Be where you are. Sometimes I'm as happy as a clam and couldn't... I've had some epiphanies recently. I was just sitting in Brussels, Belgium a couple of days ago, actually. and. Um, I had some difficulties that I won't get into, but I was lying, taking a nap in the afternoon. 
And I was reading a book on the Trinity, and I thought about the Father, Son, and Spirit, that I actually have a relationship with each member of the Trinity, with the one God, three persons beyond my comprehension. And I just began to cry with joy. Hmm. Now, I think that's a psalm. Yeah. And other times, I've been so frustrated that I scream and go, why this shouldn't be this way? And why, why did that person do that to me? And when I get like that, I, I need to be... That's um, a psalm too. That's a psalm too. That's an imprecatory it's psalm. It's an imprecatory psalm. Yeah. So let's get together as a church and let's be real where we are and God will meet us where we are. Well, you know, uh, Larry, you, you know more than I do as a psychologist, but uh, if there's one thing that people really respect these days is authenticity. Authenticity, yes. And there's no doubt the Lord respects it too. Yes.